complete guideline to become fluent in three months. In next three months, you can change your fluency game and you can become fluent with all the steps, the tasks that I've told you today in this video, in this lesson. Take it up and change your fluency game. Hello everybody, how are you all? Hope you're doing great. So welcome back to another session of learning English, improving English and speaking English fluently with me. In today's lesson, in today's session, I'm going to take up a request from all of you and this is going to change your fluency game completely. So are you all ready for this? I'm Shivangi Gupta, your CELTA certified English language tutor, certified by the University of Cambridge, the UK. And before beginning, Please subscribe the channel so that you can get all the lessons that I post for you on this channel. Please like the video and share it with your friends too. Now coming back to today's lesson. Something that is going to change your fluency game completely. What is it? Something that you have been requesting me and you requested me a lot to make a new plan for you in the live session. Today I am going to tell you the complete guideline to become fluent in three months. In next three months, you can change your fluency game and become absolutely fluent with what I'm telling you. I'm going to lay down the complete guideline for you. You will get all the steps to become fluent in next three months. So let's begin with everything that we need, everything that we must focus on to become fluent in English language. If we talk about three months, three months is a pretty long time to dedicate to a particular skill. Speaking a language, speaking English is a skill that we need to develop, that we need to hone. So fluency comes with practice. Fluency is something that we can develop with focused, dedicated tasks, with a focused plan if we have in our hand, we can achieve it. So three months is actually a targeted timeline. For a lot of people, three months can be too long. For a lot of people, three months can be too short. But let me tell you, if you are dedicating your time in the correct direction with all the correct tasks at hand and you're applying them, you're taking them up, you can become fluent in three months. You'll see at least a significant change in your level. Now, what is fluency? It depends from person to person. For example, someone who is at A2 level will think that fluency is B2 level because that's a very big jump for that person from A2 to B2. From, you can say, lower intermediate to the upper intermediate level. So that is a lot of improvement in fluency that a person is actually witnessing. Now, for example, a person is at B2 level, going to C1 level is fluency for that person. Thinking about achieving A2 to C1 in three months, that's something that is going to cause you problem because this is not a well-defined achievable goal you're setting. So your fluency is whatever, at whatever level you are, if you are jumping to the next level in your fluency game, that is becoming fluent. And we can do it, we can definitely go one level up because going one level up is also very important and it takes efforts, okay? Going to next level is not easy. And if you're dedicating your time for three months, you will gain fluency. So from A2 to B1, or if you're directly jumping to B2, that is a huge improvement, a huge achievement. So that is something we have to achieve. Let's begin with all the targeted tasks that I have laid down for you today in this particular lesson. Let's begin with the task number one, or I would say something that you have to take care of for the whole three months, the next three months you're getting, that is habit. Make English your habit. Making English your habit is very important. Whatever targeted tasks you're taking, whatever targeted task you'll take, whatever you can say, the study plan you are taking up, whatever you're doing, the challenge, anything. If you do not make English your habit, this is going to create a problem. Why? Because everything will be forced. You are supposed to take a task. Okay, this is a task that I'm supposed to do. You are not dedicated to it fully. Or you can say from your inner will. Inner will is very important. And it comes when this particular learning becomes a habit of yours. 
so you need to develop english learning habits when english is your habit you will hesitate less you will be encouraged and motivated more to learn and to speak because that is very important when you're improving speaking is extremely important if you don't speak how are you going to improve in your learning that is something that you have to ponder about that okay if i'm learning something i'm not applying it what is the use of that particular thing because this is again not a subject it's a skill as i'm telling you so making english your habit is important so that whenever you do something in english it comes naturally to you you make it a habit of yours next time you take up a task in english it's easy for you it's not forced you become comfortable in the language when you make it your habit so in order to increase that comfort level in order to increase that ease your feeling with the language you have to make english your habit think about it your native language it is a habit of yours when you have to say something quickly you are able to use your native language so fluently right because this native language is your habit your habitual to use this particular language in different context for example let's say humor you know what to say if you want to sound humorous you know what to say if you want to sound serious you can say the same sentence the same phrase and you will use it in different contexts and the audience or your listener will be able to understand because you are habitual of using your native language same thing same level of habit we have to create in english language too so we have to become habitual of using english language not just only learning but using it too because at the end you're using it you're speaking it why to communicate even when you're writing english the purpose is to communicate once you cross your academic life ahead you are going to use it for professional purposes and the written part of english is for communication whether you're preparing reports whether you're writing email whether it's a proposal it's for communication you're communicating something to somebody to an audience to the management team so basically what you're doing is you're using english for communication you have to use it you have to create good and healthy habits you have to take up tasks through which you can create english as your habit make it your habit now what to do how to get those tasks how to make english your habit that's the big question right no you don't have to worry about it you just have to check out all of my lessons related to english habits so i am telling you ample and ample of small tasks that you can include in your daily schedule that you can take up and you can make this your habit so please go check out all the lessons in the playlist take up the task and make english your habit something that you can include in your daily schedule you do not have to take out time to do them no these are small tasks basically an attitude change towards the language that you have to adopt in your day to day routine that's it so go take it up number 2 now the step number 2 is to focus on all the four language skills l s r w now like i've told you english is a skill we were talking about it right in this lesson just now in the step number 1 that was make english your habit that this is a skill and you need to develop a habit of using the skill now whenever we talk about a language it is a skill basically it's made up of four skills four skills l s r w that means listening speaking reading and writing listening speaking reading writing the four skills are like the four pillars of any language you take up any language in the world and the language is made up of these four skills they are very important the right combination of the skills can help you become fluent in english like nothing else because all the four skills are important the biggest mistake people make is to just focus on speaking and let the other three skills go just like that and they do not focus on it so they don't focus on listening and reading now writing is something you need to focus on again people neglect writing like anything they think that writing is not at all important it is important once you come to a particular later stage of your fluency when you're developing fluency 
you need to also adopt writing so that you can improve your accuracy in English. You can improve your sentence structures in English. You can improve your grammar in English because grammar is important. Do not think that grammar is not important. Grammar is important. Grammar is not important at the beginning stage because how are you going to speak? How are you going to take up everything if you're so engrossed in all the grammar rules and everything? But once you've developed a base of a language for yourself, now you understand the language, now you can speak a little bit. This is the right time for you to also focus on grammar. Grammar is important. The basic grammar, I'm not saying go check out complex grammar rules. Complex grammar rules are for professionals or for people who need it for academic purposes, right? But if you are somebody who is learning English for day-to-day -day, everyday purpose or you are learning English because it is required in your profession, for example, you are somebody who presents a lot for the company that you are working at, in that scenario, you need to pay attention towards your basic grammar as a part of later stage or advanced stage of fluency if you want to reach that. Now, coming back to all the four skills we were talking about, right? So, grammar is important and writing helps you improve your grammar, solidify it. Okay, that is what I was telling you. So, writing is important. Now, let's keep writing aside for a second and let's focus on all the three skills, the remaining three skills, listening, speaking and reading. Very important. Listening is something that you must begin with. Listening is extremely important. A lot of times, listening is neglected. A lot of times, people give preference to reading. Reading is important. I'm not saying reading is not important, but listening is extremely important. Why? Because when we speak, we produce what? We produce sounds. If you do not know how that sounds are actually produced or how the correct pronunciation of a word works and how the sounds of this particular language works, you would not be able to speak it properly because there are differences in some sounds in each and every language. There are going to be sounds similar. There are going to be sounds different. So there might be some sounds that are absent in your native language, which are present in English language. In order to be familiar with those sounds, you have to listen to it a lot. Listening gives you a base of speaking everything fluently. Your pronunciation improves a lot. The way you speak English improves a lot. So listening is important, plus listening gives you content. That means you're taking input in a particular language. So you are gaining a lot of information in a language through listening and through reading. Two receptive skills. These two receptive skills are very important. If you do not include tasks related to these two skills, in your first month of learning English, then fluency, gaining fluency will become difficult. So you need to start listening and reading in English from day one. You have three months. The first month must be completely dedicated to these two skills. You must be extremely dedicated to these two particular skills of listening and reading because you have to create a very strong base for yourself and you cannot do it without these two skills. So focus on all the four skills. Now coming to the last skill that is speaking and the extremely important skill. Why? Why are we learning English? Because we want to speak it. Speaking is the most important skill of any language because that is the basic way through which we communicate. Now, speaking is something that you must focus on and you must speak from day one. There should not be lag in learning process and speaking process. No lag whatsoever because whatever you're learning, you need to apply it. You need to apply it immediately and you apply it through what? Through speaking. That is your output. You're taking input. That is your intaking the information through listening and reading, right? Two skills. Now you have to create that output through speaking. It's extremely important to speak from day one. So begin with it. Focus on all the four skills equally, equally. Step number three. Now step number three is to take a challenge. You have to take it up as a challenge that these three months are going to be the challenge for which you have to work really hard. You have to work, you have to dedicate yourself to this particular task of improving your fluency. Take it up as a challenge or you can include a challenge in between. For example, you're taking up the three months, right? You have first month, you can be flexible, you can focus 
on your listening, on your reading, on improving your vocabulary, whatever you want. You can take it in your hand, the pace you want. You can develop the areas which are weak. You can make them stronger. And then maybe the next month, in the next month, you can take up one of my challenges. Either you can take my six week challenge, my 30 days challenge, or my 24 days challenge. So this will allow you to take up a challenge. That means targeted tasks that I've created for you. You'll be able to take them up, right? And then what will happen is you will have time for yourself to plan what you want to plan in order to improve your fluency. For example, you know your weak areas. Once you take up a challenge, you'll know them. You'll know them better. You'll be able to evaluate yourself where you stand, what else you need to do, what you need to achieve. Every person is different. Maybe you're good at vocabulary. Maybe someone else is good at pronunciation. So for person A, pronunciation is a weak area and this person needs to improve the pronunciation. For person B, vocabulary is the weak area and this person needs to improve the vocabulary. Now you are familiar with your weaknesses. What you can do is you can plan ahead the next month. The third month will be completely yours where you can plan whatever you want to learn. Dedicate your time towards learning. Or you have one more option if you want to go with the challenge. You can take up all the tasks that I'm telling you, all the steps with the 90 days challenge. Now this will require dedication. A lot of dedication because you are giving complete three months to a particular challenge. And with this challenge, you have to also consider listening, reading, writing, everything that I'm saying. The first month dedication of listening, reading should not stop. So the 90 days challenge, 90 days challenge, I've already created this particular challenge for you with targeted tasks. So the video was uploaded on 24th November, 2023. 24th November, 2023. Here is the video, you can see the thumbnail and I am telling you the date so that you can find it easily. You can go get the particular lesson easily. Now this challenge is extremely targeted with six targeted, skill-based, measurable, achievable tasks. And this works for everybody. This works for everybody. So I have created the tasks myself personally for everyone, keeping in mind that this should cater the needs of each and everyone. Whether they are at level B1, B2 doesn't matter. This is going to help you improve your English a lot. Take your fluency to the next level. And if you're taking up this challenge, it would require your dedication. And if you are dedicated enough, you will become fluent. What else do we need? Dedication is all we need to achieve anything in any field, to improve ourselves, to develop any skill. So this particular dedication is basically required to complete any challenge, complete any task. And that is why challenges are very important because when you take up a challenge, it's targeted. Your time is bound that 30 minutes of this task is supposed to be done today. It's targeted, it's focused. It's focused on a particular skill. You're not confused what to do, whether to do this, whether to do that. And your time is saved. Your energy is saved. You do not have to spend hours and hours in selecting your tasks and preparing a study plan. You already have everything laid down for you. What you're supposed to do is you're simply supposed to take up all the tasks do them, complete them, achieve your goal. That's it. So take up the challenge. That is very important for you. Step number four. Step number four is to create English environment. Creating that English environment is very important. When you create a particular environment for yourself, you are surrounded with that particular thing. For example, you're creating English environment. You will be surrounded with English. You need to create a particular environment because it motivates you. Also, it improves your mindset that right now you are supposed to do this. You're supposed to learn English. You're supposed to speak in English. You're supposed to use more English. Your mindset will change. And when your mindset will change, you will use more English in day-to-day -day life, in the real life situations. That's very important. So surrounding yourself with a lot of listening materials, with a lot of reading materials is important. How do you create that particular English environment? You can either choose a particular corner 
which is going to be your English corner. You're going to read there in English. You're going to listen to something there in English. And whenever you're there in your corner, you have to speak in English. This is going to be your English zone. You can do something like that. Plus, you have to watch a lot of content in English to create that English environment because the environment must be external as well as internal. When you watch content, when you listen to English, you create not only an external environment, but also an internal environment where your subconscious mind is getting fed with a lot of information in English. A lot of words, phrases, everything in context. Now, watching in English is very important. Why? Because when you watch, you watch in context. You can see the surroundings, you can see the action happening, you can see the people, you can listen to their voice tone, the expression, everything, and the words they're using, the phrases they're using, they start making more sense because you can also visualize the context with that particular phrase. So when you see somebody and somebody says, holy moly, on television, you'll see that's an expression of exasperation, holy moly, or surprise. The context they're using in, you'll be able to understand that context. So these words, these phrases are very important to use in correct context. And watching in English gives you that. It also creates your English environment, like I'm telling you. So English environment is very important for you to become fluent in that language because you are surrounded with your native language all the time. And you have to create a similar environment in English language. So listen to podcasts, listen to songs in English. You can listen to a lot of songs in English. You can watch web series in English, watch movies in English, watch YouTube in English, the biggest platform for free of cost, free access to a lot of videos, video platform in the world, right? So we are here right now on YouTube, you're watching me on YouTube. Utilize YouTube to watch more content in English. You can subscribe to a particular vlog, maybe a lifestyle channel, a travel channel. It can be anything according to your liking. And once in a while, you can tune into that particular channel and watch video to improve your English, okay? So do that. Plus, what you can do is you can read a lot of books, read novels, read magazines, read articles, read newspapers, read whatever you want to read. For example, you have more interest in reading newspaper, read that. A lot of people have more interest in reading nonfiction, they read that. A lot of people have interest in reading fiction, reading novels, they do that. So whatever is your interest, read according to that. But start reading from today. Start reading. That's very important for you. Step number five. Step number five is be authentic. I always stress the importance of being authentic. Being authentic means the way you speak. You have your own style of speaking. Every person has his or her own style of speaking. They have their own unique personality. Stick to that. When you're becoming fluent, you want to copy the other person that you might admire a lot. That this particular speaker is someone I'm influenced by this particular speaker. I want to become like that person. Obviously improve fluency, get inspired, definitely. Uh, try to learn from them, that's perfectly fine. But do not try to copy exactly how they speak. Stick to your own style of speaking. Improve your pronunciation. Focus on your pronunciation. That is very important. So you must improve your pronunciation. You must improve your intonation. But do not copy somebody else's style of speaking. Remain authentic version of yourself. Because people are going to respect you more when you are authentic. People will be influenced more by you. You are somebody who needs to present. Maybe you are in your office, maybe in college, you are supposed to participate in a debate or something. If you are original, you have your original way of speaking, people are going to love it more. Your audience will be influenced by you. Otherwise, they would devalue you. If you copy somebody else, you devalue yourself. And I do not want that to happen with you at all. So do not do that. Stick to your authentic style of speaking. Find that out. You have that in you. So find your authentic style of speaking and stick to that because you are you. 
there is nobody else like you in the world so be you be unique stick to yourself do not try to copy somebody else's style of speaking because that is not considered a professional attitude so it's against professionalism and as students if you're watching my video you are watching it so that you can become better for your career for your professional life ahead and if you are a working professional already then this is very important for you to excel in your career that you must stick to your authentic self it is a symbol of professionalism if you are professional you'll be authentic so please be authentic find that style of speaking that you have hone it work on it develop it work on your pronunciation simply you have to work on your pronunciation for that and you have it so this is the complete guideline complete guideline to become fluent in three months in next three months you can change your fluency game and you can become fluent with all the steps the tasks that i've told you today in this video in this lesson take it up and change your fluency game become a fluent speaker become an influential speaker so improve your english improve your english speaking skills with this 3 month plan that i have told you about today take it up go back to 90 days challenge do not forget to check that out check out the 90 days challenge too take help from there all the tasks you can take that particular challenge as it is if you want like i suggested so do it do it and see the change in your speaking fluency i'm sure you'll be able to witness a significant change so that is it for today that's it now i'm going to meet you again with a new lesson till then everybody take care keep practicing keep working hard and bye